Joe Evers, the Fence Expert, here at FizTech 2023 in OKC. I was walking the show floor, and Caleb, I couldn't help but notice there's something new in the booth this year. That's right. We've got a little stain machine here, and it's gotten less of attention. I bet that's right. I bet that's right. I, I spent about five minutes just walking around and, like, picking it apart mentally. But why don't you walk me through the process? How, how does it work? Yep. So this is a staining machine. It's made for lumber, um, dimensional lumber. You know, you okay. stain fence boards, fence pickets, two before etc. Yeah. Um, the problem is lots of fence, you know, we make stains, that's sure. what we do, and lots of yeah. guys want a stain, they want that benefit, but they don't want to spray, they don't want to yeah. brush, they don't want to train new people or hire new people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's a concern. And so they want to pre-stain, but they don't know how to do it. And so this is just an easy, quick way, an economical way to start a pre-staining uh, operation in your garage or in, in your multi-million dollar factory. So um, it's just a great little, great little machine. Pretty simple. You put the stain in the top. Okay. Well, and it's got it's got a grate in here. Yep. So it's going to filter out large sawdust, that yep. sort of thing yep. that has been a problem before. Sure. Yep. Okay. So we're going to filter everything out. Gravity flow, as you can see on this side, we've got a couple nozzles where we can meter um, how much stain's coming out. Okay. And uh, okay. obviously goes right through. So it floods onto the roller. Floods right onto the rollers. Okay. And uh, then we've just got a series of back brushes. Okay. And uh, the board goes right through. Back brushes comes out, and it's it's ready to go. So what I'm seeing here is I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any pumps here. Yeah, pumps I'm not and seeing motors. circulating pumps or anything like that. One of the biggest struggles that we see with a lot of pre-stain equipment is the pump or the motor. Yeah. Um, if you don't filter properly, you can get um, a lot of sawdust in there. You can you can strain your pump and burn it out. Yeah. It's just a, a lot of pre-stain machines go through a lot of pumps. So. Um, with gravity flow, we don't have to worry about that. You want to filter, you, you put a filter bag in the bucket underneath, it fills sure. up the bucket, then you pour it back in after you filtered it, and uh, it keeps things pretty clean. No no moving, no, you know, there's really no um, no electrical parts to go out on this. And you can really run it five gallons at a time. Yep. Uh, just five gallons of sand at a time. Guys, this is, this is something I'm really interested in. If you guys watch the show at all, you know we do pre-stain, but we've got a large trough that we fully immerse dip in, and then we hang them to our hang them to dry basically uh, what it looks what this looks like one the footprint is significantly smaller yeah, yeah. than our, our 14 foot trough yeah it's a tiny tiny little thing that folds up well and I saw two guys just pick this up and bring it in yeah like it is really easy to handle too it seems like. well it's really well built it's really heavy duty but it's only 130 pounds Caleb did I see you jump on top of this thing you did you did you said it's <laughs> happened all week, all week long I couldn't believe that I was like what what is this madman doing? And that's kind of kind of what brought my attention to it. So we can pre-stain with less stain. You know, so right now, when we're using the big trough, we're using a 55 gallons of stain, pumping it in, dipping, filtering it, and then pumping it back out, which not the cleanest operation in the world. So with this, we can really operate five gallons at a time, which is, I've got to think is going to minimize our mess, probably also minimize our waste. Um, so next thing on my mind though, is what's cleanup like? Because that's kind of a, that's a pain point for us you on know, that big trough. You know, we tell everybody this thing's going to be a pain in the neck to clean and it's going to clog up if you don't filter your stain back through from sawdust, but you can, okay. you can do a lot of production with it. Yeah. So if you get, if you get, um, obviously sawdust as you're in production, you can, yeah. you can you filter everything out. If you filter it, you're good. If you don't okay. filter it, you're just going to have some sawdust build up here. You're going to have to get out of the way every once in a while. Okay. Clean up is as simple as you um, you drain all the stain into the bucket, yep. and then you take it out. You can clean your tank out. You can wipe it out with rags. All okay. your brushes and rollers come out real easy, and uh, everything's, nice. everything's wing nuts, so it's just made to just come on and off just like that. Okay. And uh, so you can clean everything out quick. I recommend you use Dawn dish soap. You can clean baby okay. ducks with it, and you can clean uh, stain rollers and brushes. Very if you good. use a solvent like mineral spirits, that's okay. Yeah. It'll work, but you, it'll just increase the life of your brushes if you if you use something. Use something like a little that. bit gentler, yeah. like non. Okay. Yep. Good to that's know. That's it. You can wipe it all down. Most stain guys, typically that pre-stain, generally do one color. Yeah. So cleaning it um, completely is is not as important. If you're doing a lot of different color changes, then you just yeah. want to do a little better job of cleaning things. Well, we're kind of right in the middle, so we offer three. Yeah. We'll 
offer a, we offer cedar, chestnut, and walnut as our light, medium, dark yep. options. So but that's the way I would do it. I would start light in the morning, go yep. medium at lunchtime, and finish the day with dark, and then clean it. Yep, absolutely. I like like that a lot. So, what you guys have probably tested this. Do you have a feel for how quickly you can move boards through it and yep. and still retain quality? Production rates is going to be if when you get when you're brand new, probably about five seconds per board. When you get good, okay. two guys about 1,200, 1,200 six foot pickets like this per hour. Is 1,200 an hour. Yeah. And so once once you get that's, comfortable, that's in the guys rate. that are moving and grooving, they know what they're doing. Dang. Yeah. So even even if you cut it in half, it's still pretty darn good. A unit an hour is pretty yeah. good. Ah, pretty good rate. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the beauty of this, the dip tank's wonderful, but you have once you stack the board up, you got to wait a long time yep. for gravity to, yep. to dry those. Overnight. Yeah, overnight. These come out of the machine, and you can you can put them right on the fence. They're not going to drip. Um, I recommend you stack them up kind of like this and just let any, okay. any drips that you do have run down, but after that, it's ready to go. So right on the fence, so we have we have a sanding shop, but so what that makes me think of is you guys are already thinking about this being on a job site. Job site, absolutely. You can okay. do it on a job site. We've got a lot of fence suppliers that want these machines. They want to rent them out. Yeah. Um, so they buy the pickets, they buy the stain. Why not rent the stain machine too at the supply house, and then they can just stain right on the job site and take it back you know, at the end of the day. So good uh, deal. A lot of, lot of options. Let me. Looks uh, like the legs come off as well. Yeah, man. It's uh, so it's, this could fit in the back of a SUV, a back of a truck easily, but probably a back of a SUV. Yeah, it's about the size of a table saw. Okay, so if you can make, move a table saw, you can move yep. this thing. Yep. That's well, let's, let's see how this thing works. All right, well, you get on the other side and you, you got it. grab this board and pull it right out. All right, you just shove it right in. It's all manual drive. That's and then cool. I would stand it up? Stand it up for a few minutes and then you can put it, bundle it up or you can put it right on the fence. Caleb, I gotta tell you, I think you guys are onto something here. Uh, guys, watching the channel, keep keep an eye out for this. We're gonna talk a little bit off camera, I think. Uh, I would imagine you'll be seeing one of these at Ozark Fence Company. I'd like to try it just as compared to our dip tank. Our dip tank has a fair amount of pain points to it. It's been great for us, but I think we can improve on it. So. Keep an eye out for future videos. I think you'll see one like this show up at Ozark Fence and uh, we'll give it a trial versus our dip tank. Caleb, thank you so much thank for you your man. time. I appreciate you walking this, walking me through this machine. Guys, for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you next time. <laughs>